phrase, um, uh, you know, the, um, it's long been uh, uh, considered that the, uh, an income tax is, you know, the third rail of politics, and you just don't go there. Uh, and it certainly hasn't uh, um, been to the benefit of politicians in the past to, to go that route. Do you think things are different now, and if so, why? I can tell you that I believe in honest conversation about what's fair, what's a fair amount for people to pay to, for a good quality of life in Washington State, to have good schools and to have these great institutions of higher education and to have a, a safety net. I think that's a conversation that nobody should shy away from having. Do you, have you seen any polling that would suggest that the voters should be open again specifically to the high income? Um, I have heard that there are some polls that suggest that there is some openness to it, but I don't have any detailed information about that. And would you say that the sales tax is dead in your, in your caucus right now? No, the sales tax isn't dead, but there's a lot of concern about how the sales tax falls more heavily on low and middle class families. and. I can say that I don't see the Senate moving forward with any increases in the sales tax unless we fund the working families tax rebate at the same time. And is that proposal still, which proposal is more alive or more dead, or do they, are they both equally alive at this point? Uh, there's no specific piece of legislation that we're talking about in the caucus at this point. It's been more of a general discussion about the, the very devastating cuts in the budget, what they mean in people's communities, and, and how my members are responding to that. And I think you you heard in the press conference the, the feeling that this is not what we came here to do. What, what, what would you say are the odds <coughs> that you would move ahead with an income tax proposal? I don't know how to give it odds right now. Better than 50-50, under 50-50? <laughs> Until you start to put a specific proposal out there and count the votes, it's hard to know what the odds are. Uh, I, I'm under no illusion that it's a simple matter to introduce a new kind of revenue into the Washington state system. But I'm also um, very convinced that people understand that this tax system isn't fair and um, that there are affluent citizens here that can't afford to pay more and might actually step up to the plate and say they, that they would be willing to do that. You, you keep saying it's unfair, it's not fair, people think it's unfair. Can you, what, are you just, is it because it's regressive? I just want to know what your definition of what's, what's unfair in the current. Well, look, I live in Spokane, there aren't a lot of millionaires in my district. However, there are probably a few. If they lived just across the border in Idaho, they pay 7.8% of their income to the state of Idaho to help support the services in Idaho. And then they take credit from Uncle Sam for that. If they lived in Oregon, they'd pay 9%. If they live in Washington State, they don't pay anything. Um, and so... So it's I, unfair in the context I of... I think that's unfair. So it's not, it's not, you're not hitting on the regressive side of things that people accuse of sales tax, and you're hitting on the fact that other states... Uh, well, it's unfair in the sense that you enjoy the benefits of the state and aren't contributing even proportionately to supporting those benefits. And uh, on the other hand, we know that middle class families pay the sales tax on everything they purchase in the state, as well as um, having business and occupation taxes here ultimately get passed forward to consumers as well. Uh, there's also the issue of the stability of our system, and I think there's no question about the, in, in the face of this economic downturn, how quickly our revenues dropped. I think we, we, click, we quickly rose to, the, to uh, a high level of shortfall because of this high reliance on the sales tax. Could you, this is probably esoteric, but to listen to you, it sounds like you think most of these millionaire pluses basically don't go out, don't buy cars, don't spend money, don't add to the economy in a proportion greater than, say, the middle class person by paying sales tax, that they don't contribute. No, I mean, the facts pay. speak for themselves. The reality is that they pay a much smaller percentage of their income 
to support the services of the state than do middle and lower income families. And they pay a lower percentage here than they do in almost every other state in the country. If you did this, it would be caught tied up in the courts for some period of time. So again, getting back to the fact that this, the whole discussion to this point has been <clears throat> an income tax wouldn't work because it would get tied up in the courts and it wouldn't help us, help the state buy back these services now. And so, and you wouldn't be able to even predict when that court fight would end whether you would prevail and when the state would be able to, I don't even know if the Department of Revenue could start putting the structures in place while the court case was pending. And I think Jeff told me it would take 18 months from go for them to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and gosh, we've seen how the top two primary has been litigated. I mean, it seems like this is structural tax reform is only a discussion about whether to change the structure and make it in your mind fair. It's not about this crisis or solving the problem today or even through the end of the biennium. And so I just want to be really clear about your thinking. Is this about buying back programs today, or is this about I see an opportunity to do tax reform, and I'm not really thinking about whether it would help today? Well, you can't buy back programs today with money we don't have. And although I believe that we will pull out of the recession, uh, it's not clear when that will happen. And it's not at all clear that we only have a one-year problem here. It could go on for two or three years or more. And when we pull out of the recession, uh, even when employment starts to pick up again, since we have such a sales tax-based economy, state revenues will recover a lot slower. So we do have an immediate problem, and we're, we're clearly the budget cuts we've just made were our first um, responsibility to deal with it. but. As we go forward, um, I think you can always come up with an excuse. If, if we didn't pass a bill because it might end up in court, there's a lot of bills we wouldn't pass. So the opportunity here is that we've said we would go to the voters, and I think that that is significant and important and would give us a fair read on what the people of Washington State think. Governor, <coughs> Governor Gregoire was pretty quick this morning to throw cold water on the idea, and she's been saying the same thing for a while now. Are you disappointed that she hasn't been more open to this sort of idea? Well, we haven't had a conversation about this specifically, but I look forward to having that conversation. And again, I guess I would go back to, this has been part of a national dialogue, right, with President Obama, so not why not have it be part of a Washington State dialogue? Is there any chance that this idea, is you're, you're running, you're providing a little political cover, for folks who are actually thinking about just taking it directly to the ballot on their own and just bypassing the legislature, but using this conversation to figure out what ideas will work and they're writing up their own language. I don't know that that's happening. If, there, if that's happening, I'm completely unaware of it. Can you speak to what you would need to get a bill like this to the ballot? Can you get it to the ballot with a 50% majority? Yes, we'd send it out as a as a referendum? As a referendum. Okay. And you don't need to amend the Constitution to do an income tax proposal? No. We don't believe Unless we do. Unless it's graduated. Uh, we don't yeah. believe we need to do that. I believe there will be legal challenges. Right. What other revenue ideas are on the table? A number of us were over speaking to Speaker Chop. He said that this idea that we've been discussing here mm -hmm. is one of about 15 or 20 ideas being kicked around. Uh, what are some of these ideas, and how does this rise against some of them? Obviously, I guess sales tax is one of them, but what else can you tell us about? I don't know that, that I mean, I'm sure there are 15 or 20 ideas out there, but we haven't, I'm not the, I'm not the central place where they're gathered, so I don't know what they all are. Um, well, for you, what are there a couple that you see as viable proposals to consider and actually you know, seriously discuss among yourselves as long as it goes Well, the um, Senate has previously considered sin taxes, right. liquor and cigarettes, okay. for example. I would assume there's still some willingness to vote for those. Okay. But we, again, we've 
we made it clear that if we were to go there, we would be referring any kind of major taxes to the ballot. Have you had any conversations with the House uh, about the income tax idea? Uh, the House, uh, the Speaker and I have, have spoken about the concept of this and um, also sin taxes, pros and cons of, of things like that. But up until now, we've mostly been focused in on how we're going to work on the process of getting our budgets proposed and, and now negotiated with each other. So the vast majority of our conversations have been about the bills and the budgets.